talk today with this wonderful panel that I'm, I'm so excited to have here about the journey that dance of formative years of dance can lead to. Uh, so first I'm going to ask Chloe here, who is an actress, about her formative training and how that helped with your career in acting professionally. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I, I guess when I transitioned into acting, I just found so many similarities. And the training that I had had in dance had benefit, benefited me more as an actor. And I felt, uh, and I still feel like there's certain skills that I've taken from dance into acting that not many actors have. You know, for instance, uh, the use of my body. You know, they could tell me, be a certain character, be an old woman, for instance. And I immediately know my body so well that I can just, it's second nature before the words come with it. Whereas a lot of actors have to have that training. They have to go and do Alexander technique or body, body movement to, to feel themselves because a lot of it is from here up. I have been performing since I was three sure and it's it, the same process the same uh rehearsal and everything it's just putting words to it so many similarities even just the dedication that you have yeah. to put towards dancing transfers exactly um, that's in life skills in, in, in yeah. everything you do in everything and i think it's wonderful to have a variety when they're young, not put everything into channel it into one area. And mm. that uh, leads me to talk to Daniel because you were so versatile as a young student. And how did that help you in all your directions? Um, well, I was very blessed to have that training when I was young. It's very fortunate to be taught by you. And I had a lot of other great teachers uh, that taught me many styles which was ingrained in me as a kid. So uh, I went into ballet, but I always had a desire to branch out. So I took the risk and went down a different path, but it was the foundation that I was taught as a kid. It's like what they say, you can't build a house without a strong foundation. Exactly. So I really felt like I could go anywhere with that strong ballet foundation and everything else I did. Um, then I even branched out into some background acting work. And, oh, really? Yeah, I didn't and, know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> and dancing with the Rockettes, they were looking for solid technique, clean lines, and with a jazzy musical theatre flair. So I did that. Uh, you've had it all, <laughs> yeah, from the ballet, the pure ballet company, you know, because you're in two ballet companies, aren't yes. you? Yes, San Francisco and Miami. Wonderful, and then you've worked closely with Twyla Saab. Yes. Uh, yeah, for those that don't know, she created the famous ballet Upper Room, which uh, is famous for a lot of ballet companies. In fact, the Australian Ballet did that recently as well. Yes. So you've worked very closely with her. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. tools. What about you, Claudia? Wow. Well, yeah, I share those sentiments because I trained with you all my life and um, you know, ballet just gives you that opportunity as a child to dance to music, learn this beautiful art form, and but it also sets you up with all these other life skills like determination and goal setting, which I don't think as a child you appreciate, but then it comes to fruition in, in later life. So yeah, I've had a really different career to a lot of people here. I went to university after I finished with you and um, studied forensic science and law which then took me overseas and I've worked as a media lawyer for a long time um, with the BBC and then back in Australia with Foxtel and the ABC who then approached me separately to write reviews on ballet and contemporary dance. So that's how my stories come full circle. So now I go and review and occasionally I see people that I've trained with at Marie's who are now <laughs> principal dancers. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a quite circle. an amazing yeah. journey. And then we have Rebecca here, who's just visiting from Germany, and what a career from from the stage to repetitor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you explain what that is? Because uh, I think uh, that's a, a direction that a lot of students out there that will be um, listening to this, and a lot of teachers may not know about, and it's a, a very specialised field. 
yeah, it was just a field that interested me because when I was ballet master with the company, which um, is a very intense job where you're teaching class, you're coaching, you're taking rehearsals and everything, but uh, we were lucky enough to have a wonderful repertoire coming through the company and people came in to stage the ballets. And uh, these are the repetiteurs who I was fascinated by the different ways people approach it from uh, in different um also, you know, from Balanchine to something very modern to something very classical, and um, but the the ones who seem to do it well, no matter what the discipline or the style, the efficiency with which they can, um, yeah, translate the information that is necessary to the dancers in and and keep it um, keep the dancers motivated and progressing in the style, and I think it goes back to what everyone here said about. Uh, in this field, I think the training as a young dancer that you learn the discipline, the long-term goal, the not the quick payoff, the slow and steady, uh, yeah, certainly helps you to understand that. That yeah, you might you have to take some time with different people, understanding that everyone has different ways of learning. Exactly, and, um, and yeah. you can't approach it always the same with every dancer or every company and you all talked about goal setting well I still from the children eight years and above they have their goal books in the classroom yes. and they have to document their weekly goals their term goals and their yearly goals and I think and I don't look at them that's their personal goals but I think ticking those off and goal setting is life skills that uh, can set you up. I think goals change over time and with your maturity. Awesome. Like I'm setting my goals right now and a big one of those is to, you know, uh, see what arts can do for a community and how to build more opportunity for these dancers so they have somewhere to go. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I'm 65 and I'm still setting goals. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think it also plays into that sort of, it's a, it's a good step away from that social media instant gratification. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The competitions are the same. You might win the prize, but that doesn't necessarily set you up for what you might want in the future. That's so right. it's really important to step back and think, what do I want long term out of this? Exactly. And I would encourage um, everyone to branch out with their training yeah. so they're not mm, most definitely so you have yeah. <clears throat> more options in your Absolutely. future That's right. instead of just saying you know you might be a wonderful ballet dancer but companies now they want it all you know they, exactly. they've all got contemporary attached to it and just opening yourself up to opening the doors as you can. Exactly. that's right mm. and don't be so disillusioned if one of the dreams, one door shuts. I really believe if a door shuts, another one opens. Yeah. Mm. I was just saying, you know, we're probably all going to be working till we're 80, so. Which is not far off. No. <laughs> <laughs> Still <a> mile. Sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's a chance to have multiple careers because, you know, you can do one thing for 20 years, even if that is be the prima ballerina. But what are you going to do? You know, you might come out 35, 40, you've still got a 40 year career ahead of you mm. and you have to think about what what am I going to do where am I going to branch That's off right. into yeah. and exactly. um and yeah life is long so it's thank it's, god it's, yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> and and what is great about Germany though is they do help the dancers retrain don't they there are a lot of possibilities in it, I think it depends on the individual companies but a lot of um, places do have a a retraining program that um, you can pay into as you go at, when you start in the company and um, yeah there's quite a few in Europe in general that have this sort of mm, uh, wonderful yeah it's it's a yeah. bit of a safety net yes I think for a lot of yes. people that's so yeah. great another topic um, that's important to talk about is education yes and I hate to admit it but I didn't graduate high school um, so I'm in awe of people that have gone on to do amazing things and uh, working in the profession for 16 years I've witnessed people have great careers and then go on to Harvard Business School, Yale and become lawyers, doctors, yeah. uh, even videographers for American Ballet Theatre. Um, so just, you know, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite but I want to share that, that it's a lot easier 
for younger people if they stay open to education yeah exactly and how was it being a forensic scientist? <laughs> hey, hey, wow. <laughs> now that's very diverse. I know, it's diverse, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, I think, again, it sounds fairly far-fetched, but it's those transferable skills. You know, if you've got an interest in something and you want to achieve something, you set goals and then you just that's right. go through the motions. And for me, I had a real interest in sciences. I got to the end of that degree and I didn't really feel that working in a laboratory, you know, I felt a bit more social and wanted more human interaction. And so that wasn't for me. And so then you just reshape your goals and where you want to go in life from there. Which is very important as well to think it's not the end of the world if your first plan isn't. That's right. Yeah. Often things you That's get right. to the end of the goal and it's actually not what you wanted it to be or right. what you thought it was going to be at the start. Exactly. And so then you just think, oh, well, great, now I've got all of these additional skills. Where can we go next? <laughs> <laughs> so I think the moral of it is dance. Mm. Enjoy your dancing mm. and by, be diverse because mm. you never know where you're going to end mm. up and, and enjoy the journey because if you don't enjoy it, no one's going to enjoy your performance. Thank you so much, Claudia <laughs> Thank Lawson. You. Thank you. Oh, this is just like a reunion. <laughs> Daniel Baker from New York just right. last week. Chloe Bayless, a wonderful actress, and uh, presently on uh, Doctor Doctor, mm -hmm. yes, and Rebecca Gladstone from Germany. Ah, <laughs> oh, how special is this? What a gathering! Oh, Thank lovely. you all so much. <laughs>